This week, Nelson and I review what we've been smoking with the sticks of the week. We're also going to talk about the institution of El Lector. I'm very excited about this topic. We have Cigar News. Stogie Geeks, email me, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. We have a promo going on that's exclusive to Stogie Geeks. You get a cigar sampler, 20 sticks, Robusto Toro, Churchill, 20 sticks total, $69.99 delivered to your door, free shipping. It's an exclusive deal. You got to email me so I can give you the code so you can be in the know. And then there you go, right? So Joe H at stogiegeeks.com. We have Cigar News. The stick of the week is the Diamond Crown Maximus number four. And we have stuff you just might need to know. Episode 339 of Stogie Geek starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have Remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome everyone to Stogie Geeks, episode 339. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. It is a privilege and an honor to be here in G-Unit Studios. I am joined in studio by Nelson. Good morning, Joe. Morning. He shows up to Stogie Geeks and he he comes back. (laughs) Digging it. It's a good time. It's a good time. We got a a, a pretty super cool agenda. Uh, You're going to give us a... Flash of some Sagan news. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, I want to talk about the institution of El Lector. Do you know what El Lector is? I'm going to learn today. Um, you don't know what El Lector is yet? No. no? Oh, man, I'm, I'm super pumped that this, is, this concept is even happening in the industry. Um, I, I, I'm just so, I'm so, I'm so fascinated by it. Uh, always been fascinated by it. And um, we're going to talk about that. Also, Stogie Geeks, we have a promo, $69.99, delivered to your door, free shipping on some super cool sticks. You get this brick of sticks delivered to you, 20 sticks. All you got to do is email me, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. If you have any complaints about the show, email them to drew at stogiegeeks.com. Uh, Drew is uh, unavailable over there in Texas. It's a little windy, and I think they have some down power lines and a broken router. Router? Router? Router. Router. Thank router. you. Router's car, router's computers. Got it. Uh, and then um, he's got some work stuff going on. So, uh, you know, Drew, he, he had his year anniversary. He has perfect attendance for a year. And then, like, he's had his anniversary month, and he's showed up. It's all him. gone to shit now. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? It's all good. He needs a little break. For, uh, pro- pro- probably not from the show, but from me. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Who knows? So, yeah. So, we have all of that stuff all intertwined with our Sticks of the Week discussion. Of course, there will be some expert commentary from Nelson and some regular commentary from me uh, as to what he's been smoking uh, there. And then uh, just want to remind you that Stick of the Week is Diamond Crown Maximus number four. Um, our friends over at JC Newman want us to talk about that, and we are super excited to do so. It feels like every time you're here, right, 
I talk about something with J.C. Newman. J.C. Newman. It was I never like that. I can honestly tell you because you came for the Yagua for unboxing. For the Yagua unboxing, yeah. Right? And then you came for the last episode and we did something with J.C. Newman. Uh, oh, it was their bundled sticks. Talked about the concepts of the bundled sticks there. Um, and um, now you're here again. Stick and of then, the week. And then here we go. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, the next J.C. Newman promo uh, will be sometime in – like November or December, so we're look out for it. <laughs> and unless they email me and say, "Can you talk about this?" or "Can you talk about that?" I want to get something out of the way right quick. I, I um, I'm not super shocked at, at this in, in within Cigar News, but Alec Bradley Cigars introduces the release of the Mega Burner lighters. Now I saw this. Yes, yes. So, um. As you know, if you frequent a brick-and-mortar shop, there has always been a little, it looks like a little Bunsen burner there. And, and it's funny because, like, uh, like, to me, from either owning a shop or frequenting shops or whatever, every company has their own version of what I call, like, a staple in a brick-and-mortar cigar shop. For example, Drew Estates has that um, big statuesque ashtray. We have it here in studio somewhere. Somewhere. Right? It's actually used uh, on some of our Security Weekly <laughs> podcast more than Stogie Geeks. But anyway, right? Uh, you know, they, they have that there. Um, La Aurora's got their ashtrays. they got the Deeper Bowl. Um, you know, uh, help, help, help me out here with well, some Perdomo swag. Perdomo has them. Oh, Perdomo's got all the virgin with the roll and the thigh. Yep. Right? Every shop you go through, there's a... I call it the virgin roll. Here we go. Here comes I wasn't the emails, touching that. Right? <laughs> no, there's always, no, there's always some super hot chick rolling a cigar on her thigh and whatnot. And she's all, like, propped up like this, rolling the, the cigar. We like need that. a visual. Right, I'll give you a visual, right? You know what I mean? And I'm just like, man, well, okay, cool. Like, every, every cigar shop has that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's just like, come on, man. And Alec Bradley joins the crew with well it's better than the whole scoff thing like a couple yeah. of people a couple of people they, they 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 wear like the scoff you know because they don't want to smell like cigars and whatnot and you know i love smoking cigars and i love smelling like cigars because just keeps the skeeters away you know what i mean so anyway uh alec bradley no stranger they've had these little bunsen burners um <laughs> i love walking into a shop this happens every time where someone's like <laughs> They, they don't know how to use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't know how to use it. It's or not when a typical they, lighter. Oh, it's not a typical lighter because you got to turn the, the the butane on. It goes, and then from there you click it there, and the butane comes up. It's usually a big freaking cloud of fire, and they freaking burn half the stick from the thing. If they have like bushy eyebrows, it burns their eyebrows. It's crazy, right? Uh, but anyway, um, my favorite classic with the Alec Bradley burner is you know the little spigot that spot that has this, the, yep. the 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 uh, thing, right? You got to flick it with with your finger or flick it with your thumb to get off because sure. as you're lighting and relighting, there's ash falling in that. Happens very common. When I did yeah. a lighter episode of Stogie Geeks, that was funny. I got tons of emails saying I can't find a lighter that like works. You know what I mean? That's User like, error. Yeah, yeah, and they're like, well, <laughs> they're, they're all, dude, the emails were classic, right? Thank God they all go to Drew. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, Alec Bradley came up with this. I, I'm, I mean, it's a big lighter. So, now um, they've had the ones that are uh, – they've had a little one. It stands like yay high full of butane. Now they have one that's like this. It's like a canister. You can walk around. It reminds me of like if you were, go, if you were like Dog the Bounty Hunter. You could like spray someone with mace, like it's that. It's got that canister on. It's like a pepper spray looking thing. Yeah, that's yeah. what he did, right? Pepper spray, whatever dog used, right? And, and, and so, but now they uh, re- released the Mega Burner with uh, three graphic logos. Yeah, they're came, beautiful. They, they are beautiful. A little steampunk for me, um, you know. But you know something? I put two together when I think of Alec Bradley. They always had a design. Yeah, look at their bands. Yeah, and I'm like, no wonder why it's steampunk, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, I don't know if that was their intention or just marketing luck. Uh, I'll have to reach out to to Jonathan. But they incorporated this. I think is super cool because Caldwell did this as well with some of their designs and bands. They they've outsourced an artist who they like. I mean, obviously Drew did it with the Acid series. You know what I mean? And and you know, like the guy on the motorcycle is a legit dude. Like, right. you know, um, and. You know, I, I think it's super cool. So anyway, uh, if you go to Alec Bradley's wet website, you can check these out. These will fly off the shelves um, probably faster than the Drew Towers for sure. Um, when I think they're, they're limited edition too, right? Yeah, yeah, they're limited edition. It's in three different um, 
it's it's in three different um uh type of uh there you have a pinup series so you got some girl who's like this you know doing her thing uh and then you have uh uh she's called the bomb girl then you have a steampunk series then you have an octobot classic ink series which is like you know kind of like a super cool um you know is it a it, sea monster or an octopus or yeah, something yeah, i thought i saw yeah, yeah yeah and you know it's um it's there you go so check them out over alec bradley uh, their website. If you're on social media, you know all about it. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. You have anything else you want to add to that? No, I, I actually, it's funny you brought this up. I just, when I was doing some research for the news, I, I came across that um, release and I thought they looked really cool. Um, I don't know if I'd buy one. I don't have a man cave yet. Uh, I think it's perfect for that type of thing if you have a man cave or if you have a retail shop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, per, it's not something you can carry in your pocket, it's, it's pretty damn big. It's like Dog the Bonnie Hunt is yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's a cool shop lighter. So if you know to fry somebody's face or light a cigar, it's perfect for that. Yep. No no question. And, and and I remember when those Alec Bradley lighters came out. You want to talk about branding and, and brand recognition and using the name. Happens all the time. Vendors, when they first came out, was always like, wow, this is a super cool lighter. For your either man cave or patio right. or whatever. Like, who makes it? You say Alec Bradley. And then the person would probably be like, you know, who's who's them? If they weren't familiar with their sure. brand or if they never smoked it, and then they would go out and seek it. And uh, that's why they come up with, with, with these trinkets. So I think it's super cool. Um, you know, and... Uh, I love cigar swag, so... Yeah! It's right up my alley. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, I, I I like, you know, it's limited edition there, so I'm sure they come out, uh, they'll come out with something different and all of that. Um, you know, I... I would try to match it to the bands if it were me for for marketing. That's an interesting idea. You know idea. what I mean? You yeah. know, like have like the boys Alec and Bradley do their own thing or whatever. But you know, um, you know, to incorporate an artist in there, uh, I, I, there's no logo on it. And but everybody knows it's now Alec Bradley. It's just a lighter. cool looking lighter. So it's right. a cool looking lighter, and it's still going to lead to the discussion of holy crap, this is a cool looking lighter. Can I get one? No. There's only 150 made, and I'm making the number up. Uh, there's only, I think there's it's all, 500. Yeah, there's, 500 only, there's only 500 made. It's always limited, right? It's only 500 made of each one, and, and there you go. And, and they're, they're going to sell quick. 150 is the it's price. The price. That's oh, where yeah. you got one, 150, 150 from. 150 for a lighter. 150. One, 150 for a lighter for your man cave. That. It's a big one, though. Yeah. It's not a pocket lighter. It's worth 150 You think so? <laughs> not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty then. Now, no, for a shop, I think it's cool. No, that's what for I'm saying. You talk. can't put it in your pocket for everyday use. It, you know, who's going to pay $150 for a lighter? Although people buy Whoa, those. Oh, SS DuPont. You yeah, can spend I was just going to say. G's for a lighter. People spend thousands on those DuPonts. You know what I mean? Put them in their pockets. Right? You know, it's like freaking Island Gym from Oscar, right? I did a radio interview with from Oscar. He comes in, jeans and sandals, and he's got his little straw hat, and he's chilling. And all of that stuff, and it's like you know he's he's teaching, uh, he's preaching the, um, you know, like the I don't say surfer lifestyle, but like being a nomad and doing all of that, right? I'm sitting over there looking at him on the radio. I'm a little, I'm looking at his watch, and his watch is like 55 G's. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, dude, it's like you know. But I regress because this one was worth more than my Civic when I drove one. So you know, I guess it's just a, it is what you like. So and that's what it's all about. That, that's what it's all you about. You can live the nomad life and still like nice things, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. What's going on in the news? The news? Yeah. Give me give me some news I want to talk about. Well, you know, today's 9-11. Mm. Um, so obviously you want to recognize that. Um, and, you know, if there's a thread of good news related to 9-11, I, I did pull, uh, pull something up. So uh, Caldwell got together with Protocol, and they're coming out with a, a new stick called One. O-N-E, one. Uh, it's a 5 by 50 uh, Dominican Puro. Uh, it's going to be a Robusto size. And all the proceeds from the purchases of this stick are going to go to the Tunnel to Towers Foundation, uh, which donates uh, all the proceeds to families and victims uh, of the 9-11 Towers uh, disaster. So I thought that was pretty cool. This foundation supports all the families, and that Caldwell got together. Um, and it's a limited edition stick as well. Mm -hmm. um, but all the proceeds from these purchases are going to go uh, to these families. Should be available actually later this month. 
Uh, so before the end of September, we should see that come out. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing I thought was interesting. Oh, s- you're switching subjects? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Nah, Sorry. We, don't, we don't have word economy on this show. Oh, go. This, we don't have word economy hey, on this show. Go ahead. Um, I, I, th- I think that that's super cool um, uh, for the charitable foundation there. Um, protocol uh, sends us a boatload of press releases but never returns any of my emails. So uh, I'll be short with airtime on them. Um just if anybody knows anybody, have them give me a call. Uh, and I think that, like, internally, like, when I look at them from the outside, because I don't know much about them uh, and all blends, because now blends that get shift, get, I pass them out. Like, I won't smoke them. If, yep. you, want, if you want to return my call, I, I, won't, I won't smoke them. Um, and it, looking at the foundation and what they want to do, I think it's so cool. Um, and the cigar industry, the premium cigar industry, there are a lot of stories like that there. Um, I, my only comment about them would be the uh, cadence of the timing. I would have probably done something after the date. Not immediately after, but not like right week before. Because I think like 9-11, um, like COVID and like... Uh, uh, any other pandemic or any other situation and we know someone who has been deployed or someone like that's a that's a scar yeah you know what i mean and i think it's great to support the cause but i don't like examining people's bodies so to speak from a marketing perspective and how'd you get that scar how'd you get that scar you know what i mean mm-hmm. and and i just i just would have switched gears on that uh route you know yeah. um but that but that's just m- that the views expressed in this opinion do not reflect Story Geeks <laughs> management and or its staff, right? I, I, that's coming from me. Yeah, but I mean, I it, think it's super cool that they did it, and I'm sure it's going to be a hit. I just, you know, like even um, um, uh, we interviewed the uh, the guy from Line of Duty Cigars, right? And they just release stuff, and obviously stuff from Line of Duty that there are scars with people's lives. Again, another sensitive subject. And um, he just releases stuff. And I think that just releasing it when there as opposed to the actual date is, yeah. is, 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 is I don't know. I just, that's, that's, that's just me. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess I have a different perspective. I, I think it's a great thing. And it's not just protocol. It is Caldwell, right? Caldwell mm-hmm. is, is, it's actually at, uh, something added to their lost and found mm-hmm. line of sticks. Right. Um, Which that is a rabbit hole you can go down. Well, yeah. If you're a, a, a true cigar geek, um, going down trying to find Caldwell's lost and found stuff. Yeah. Have you gone down that rabbit hole yet? No, yeah. no. But I have been down those types of rabbit holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 To find that hard to find stuff. Actually, one of the sticks <laughs> I'm one of the sticks I'm reviewing this week. I I think I actually literally wrote a note that said, um, "Good luck finding them." Sure. Um, I like to do that when when we do uh, Story Geeks reviews, as opposed to like, look what I can smoke, look what I found. Yeah, just let them know because we've gotten emails like, I can't find stuff. Right? Oh yeah, I <laughs> know. Yeah, totally, yeah, no. t- we'll totally be upfront with that. But you'll meet a new friend if you find it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Awesome. And if you know that connection, let me know. Um, so yeah, and I think it's great because you know all the proceeds are going. They're not keeping any of the money. Um, you know, they're donating it all to that Tunnel to Towers Foundation, which I looked up and is a is a very legitimate um, organization. So, you know, the timing, I, I, I guess you could argue the timing is actually good because people it gives visibility. So, I mean, I could see the other side of it, too, mm-hmm. you know, because it is 9-11. People are conscious of it and they'll buy it. It is limited edition. So maybe they'll go out and s- I hope they sell these out and all the money goes to these families. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, um, before we change gears. Remember how we all felt that day? Oh. Not looking for an explanation. Like of uh, it's one of those things like we know where we were, uh, right? A hundred percent. And remember how we all felt on nine twelve? And the week after? I was gonna say even beyond. And yeah. the week after. Remember that united feeling? That's what they that should have been the focus. Cause now more than ever, when you're talking politics, um, Geez, sex or religion or Yankee Red Sox baseball, right? Uh, when you're talking politics, um, that how we all felt on September 12th should be how people need to look at where they are 
yeah now with covid i was talking it's funny you say that you know i had I mean? that discussion and with the, someone and, today you know and 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 i think that that is the message cuz the the scar happened but that is the message and the message is the u- uniting of of uh uh, how we were united. And, I mean, we are called the United States of America, right. in case we forgot, right? Or lost our way, or listened to social media, or regular media. But anyway, um, I, I think that as as people, we should come together. Yeah, I uh, couldn't agree more. Spot on. Um, I had a discussion with someone today, and we talked about, you know, everyone talks about never forget, mm. and... What I had said was, well, let's never forget the days after. And exactly right. exactly what you yeah. said, which is, remember how you felt. Remember how we all came together. I think people forget that. Yeah. And I think that's part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, ha- I went to the World Series in 2001, Yankees in Arizona. And that was right after 9-11. Right. And that was, I went to game four and five and... Uh, president throughout the ball, and that that again is one of those stapled moments that it's like you know, and I know it's baseball, and I'm and but it's like like I mean, you, you, <laughs> I never felt more safe anywhere because like for every one person they had like seven cops, you right. know what I mean, and 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 they had. Jer- have you ever been to a baseball uh, stadium? You know how you have different sections. Well, each section was jersey barrier off. Oh wow! With fencing that went up to the top. Now the good news is, if you were in the bear section, you couldn't eat. Bad news is, if you're in the food <laughs> section, and and people were like reaching around the fence to like exchange, like I'll buy you a beer if you buy me yeah. a hot dog, and you were even united at a baseball game. And it was a whole the check in process was ridiculous. Like I could do a whole freaking story geek show. Like, you know, I drive up in my Nissan Xterra and they're like, Yeah, truck and SUV parking, lot four. And I'm like, Oh boy, I've been to Yankee Stadium before. This is gonna be a long walk. Oh, and there's wow. no tram because it's nine eleven. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and and it was just like, ugh. And then so we did that. Um we had to show up at the game at four twenty five for eight thirty. Um, TV time game because you oh, know yeah. they saw them late. Right. So we were sitting in the chairs in the section like four hours before. It was crazy. It was it was it was it was a it, but it, but it was a unique experience that left a scar for everyone. And uh, when I think of the United, how we were all united, I I just I think that we need to to um get could back you, there. Somehow. Could you feel that at the game? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, no, Those yeah. days after, yeah. Well, it's weird, right? Because it's like, first of all, you're at a World Series, right? And, and, and That's you're, special you're, you're, in itself. Yeah, it's special. Even before Kurt Schillen's acting lessons with the bloody sock and all that stuff, right? <laughs> it, it, like, he was Arizona. I mean, he shut the Yankees down. Like, dig there. Like, they, right. they, they, they shut the Yankees. I mean, game four and five we went was like freaking, you know, you had Kurt Schillen, then you had Randy Johnson. Like, you screwed. <laughs> right? But you felt... You just you, and 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 now that I'm thinking of this here live here, you felt a unity between you and police officers, regardless of status. Yeah, and again, just saying, I I always say I keep it real, right? The joy you get on and off story geeks in life is the joy you get, right? Like that's the problem. I know there were situations that led to turn. I know you get some bad apples, so don't, uh, you know, but you were united. And I think that unity needs to come back. Yeah. Um, on so many levels. But but you felt it. You felt it. Um, and it's weird, right? Because cause you, you drive and you see a skyline that's embedded like i don't know if uh, i'm not a movie buff but i guess if i were a movie's buff i'm like an 80s movie's buff so like if ghostbusters is on right i'll watch it right and i know and, where you're going and, and and like you see the panoramic when over the bridge yeah. and or uh i don't know i'm thinking of some other you know other movies that have taken place you know um you know uh, Kurt du- Michael Douglas was a big New York guy. All his stockbroker movies, you know what I mean, or whatever. And then you just see a skyline, and then like in your mind, like 
like my mind jolts yeah. but i've asked friends like in personal conversation oh yeah it's weird like you see that and whatnot so like again it's a scar and yeah. i think the unity i mean the scar's called one it's unity that's the message not the timing right i i've beat this to death but anyway um it's a good way to to tribute to 9 11 i thought that was a good a yeah, I want to give them a give them a mention. Check that check it out. Like I said, it should be coming out yeah. uh, later this month. Yep, yep. Hopefully, the stick will be ready and it'll be good, and everybody will be happy, and they can help out the charitable organization. Yeah. And I think that's a super cool idea. Yeah. Let's let's lighten the subject. What have you been smoking uh, today? And actually, I have to thank uh, Joe from Stokey Geeks. What is it? Oh, uh, oh. The six eighty five Woodlawn. Um, I think you actually might have told the story on the show, but uh, I was with Joe at a retail shop, and I said. Go in that humidor and pick out a stick that you would want me to smoke. And he picked out this Kristoff 685 Woodlawn. And so Jared from Kristoff, who says that I hate <laughs> his stuff, and I quote, Jojo, you don't even like my stuff, right? Uh, first stick I picked out was a 685 Woodlawn. Just saying. True story. True story. I was there. And um, have been searching. I was just telling Joe before the show, I've been searching high and low for a box. Finally found a box. <laughs> And uh, this is the first one out of that box, and I'm really enjoying it. It's a great, great stick. This is one of the sticks I was going to talk about today. Yeah, go for it. Oh, fantastic. Sure. Um, so this is the, as I said, the 685 Woodlawn. There's a cool little story behind this, and I, I love the stories behind <laughs> some of the cigars. It's probably why you're, you're on So You Geeks. But anyway, <laughs> you know, it's like saying, hey, we should do a show about Lover of the Leaf. We all love the leaf. We spend 10 to 20 or $30 a stick. Moving right, on. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> So the uh, the owner, uh, Christoph, Glenn Case, um, grew up on 685 Woodlawn in Chicago. So he named his stick after his home address um, back in the day. And uh, I've, like I said, I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's um, it's a little sweet in the beginning. Not super sweet, but it's a, it's a little sweet, um, little earthy. You get earthy tones throughout the entire stick. Uh, I would say it gets a little stronger, actually, as you go on. So it starts sweet, mild, a um, little bit of cocoa on the retrohale. And then as you you know finish off, it definitely gets a little stronger. And it, it doesn't kick your ass, but it, 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 it's in there. It's in there. Um, let's see what else did I write in here. Oh, a little bit of pepper, too. That's right. There's a, there is definitely a little bit yep. of pepper going on in here. So, you know, for this one, I would say this is definitely um, a box split only because it's very hard to find. So if you can get a box, split it with a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I will definitely be buying more and smoking more of these. Mm. What do you got going over there? I have the stick of the week. Let's start with the stick of the week, all right? Um, this is the Diamond Crown Maximus number four, and it's a Toro. Um your wrapper is uh, Ecuadorian sun grown, and your binder and filler is from the Dominican Republic. Uh, your size is a uh, six by fifty. Uh, initial impressions from this stick: it, you, you, you look at it, it's like it looks um, from the regular Diamond Crown versus Diamond Crown Maximus. Um, it, it seems to be a little bit more veiny, which some people think is a deterrent. I mean. It's it it is what it is. Um, wh what I like about it is the aroma you get. You're gonna get a little bit of wood and a little bit of cinnamon, right? But you also get like a a a, a barnyard hmm. uh, from the foot, but it's not quite Davidoff barnyard. You know what I mean? Like that grass, that fret, but stronger, it is stronger. Yeah, it, it, it is a little stronger and it's earthier. Um, retro hail is freaking phenomenal. Um, pears awesome with a coffee or a bloody Mary. Uh, I bullet cut it. Uh, you get some cinnamon notes. Um, uh, on the, on the cold draw, I got some salt like there. You get salt and earth earthiness. And I think because of the, and then when you light it, I get pepper, pepper. But if you smoke it like really, really slow. You can kind of pick up a little bit of saltiness, which is why I think it hmm. pairs well with the Bloody Mary, for sure. Yeah. Um, they're a little, they can be a little bit on the expensive side, but you can shop around and 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 get them. And um, I, I would I would definitely go um, box split with a friend, um, just simply because of the price. I mean, it's not an everyday smoke, 
But if you want to buy someone a gift, um, you know, or if you want to treat yourself, that is a a a, a, a super good go to. Yeah. Um, when a box was shipped here at Story Geeks, it was my everyday smoke. Oh wow! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was like, man, these are and, and, and Paul and I just ripped right through them, like ripped right through them. And um, you know, uh, we usually just grab like our methodology is when it gets delivered, we just smoke it on our own work paths, and when we cross in in um, in the hallway or in studio, they're in our crazy agenda here. Um, He's like, did you try this? I'm like, oh yeah, and then we get going. Right, and, start talking and, about and, it. And that, and that was one of the ones that, like, like, dude, these are pretty sweet. Yeah, you know, that's his words. Like, dude, these are pretty sweet. You know, um, I, I like I said, I'd go box split with a friend because it can be a little bit of pricey. But if you really want to treat yourself, or if someone wants to get you a gift card, uh, <laughs> there you go. You get, you know. Um, so I would go box split with a friend um, there. And you can share the experience, especially like if you have a cadence of things going with your friends. Like if you're gonna do like a golf tournament, not a day tournament. Like cause you're gonna golf with your friend like six times or whatever. You're gonna and, smoke a lot that day. It, you know, no, no, no. I'm saying like, like you know, like or if you if you have a friend that comes over, your c- garden or man cave or whatever you want to call it. It's a super good like chill with your friends. Um, oh, okay. And celebrate it. Yeah, like sure. That. It, to me, to me, it reminds split. me of just celebratory because it truly is different. So it's for special occasions, but not super special occasions. I mean, unless I mean, if, you, if you're making bank, I mean, freaking, you, you could know, make it every day. You could make it every day. <laughs> I mean, go for it. You know what I mean? Go for it. But they're not too too expensive. I mean, you're in that fifteen to sixteen. Yeah. I just I, I don't like to 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 rate things on the air of that. I, if if it's if it, if it's in a certain price range, then I give it uh, that rating, but. That's why I'm just hanging on now. I like to let the – because what I learned from uh, listener feedback when they email me is that they like my reviews because I set the table. Yeah. That's their words. Now, like when you – like I know that, okay, this is going to be expensive, but I'll seek it out. Or, wow, this is not expensive, and this is a bundle or whatever. And, and I like to give equal attention and set sure. the expectations for the Story Geeks listener. But to me, that's just – that's a – that's the radio experience I have and television experience. I, I can't get the, the 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 microphone responsibility out of me. Right. As opposed to just me ripping off about, you know, hey, I sell coffee, but I don't know what blend it is. It would be awesome. You know? No, I, did, uh, I, I do <laughs> want to step back to the Kristoff because I did leave something out that I think is very important. Sure. Is the, the shape. Mm. This perfecto shape on this stick is unbelievable. Like as far as an experience goes, just – Holding it, mouthfeel. Yes, it's so it's not only just a great a great cigar, um, but the shape and the experience just enhances the whole experience. It's it's really awesome. So, I did feel bad I didn't mention that that it is this perfecto shape, and I have not found another one, even perfectos that is it's just it's perfect. Yes, yeah, it's as far as the shape goes. mm -hmm. Perfectos, for me. I find them wobbly in my hands. That makes sense. And and I've given I've nuked cigars because I'm a guy. I don't like the way it feels in my hand. Smokes great, constructed great. He doesn't have a bottom to feel about it. No, uh, I agree I would, with you because yeah. I truly think that if you take the time out and smoke a cigar, no matter what cigar it is, you you either consciously or subconsciously pick that up. Or if as you continue your journey and story geeks listen to your own personal journey. Um, You'll be like, man, that kid's either full of crap or, wow, he really, that's right, that's what I feel, you know what I mean? And, yeah. And, and I truly think that that, that that is important. And that size, um, and, and, and for Perfecto, it, it, it's portable, meaning oh, you totally. could golf with that, you could fish with that. 100%. I would hope that you don't have a fish finder. Okay, if you have a fish finder and there's lots of fish, don't like that cigar because you're going to miss out on the nuances. But if the fish ain't biting that day, that will, will make the day brighter. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I was just down the Cape, and you're talking about fish, fish finder. I was kayaking, and uh, a buddy of mine had given me uh, this beautiful Don Carlos personal reserve. Mm. We're kayaking down the in Cape Cod here in Massachusetts, or actually I'm in Rhode Island, but in my state, my home state, Massachusetts. And while I was oaring, you know, trying to hold a cigar, there's no good way to smoke a cigar while you're paddling. There just isn't. Wait, in a kayak? In a kayak. There's no cigar holder. I didn't have a cigar holder. You need a cigar. You can't do it. You, you got to use both hands, dude. 
Yeah, uh, I've kayaked before. No, you gotta use both hands, and then you're going like this. You're going this way, and yeah, you're going that way, right? right. Yeah. So well, I'm like this, you know. I got it holding. I'm, I'm paddling. I, I did awesome for like a quarter mile. Fantastic, no problems. Next thing you know, my buddy goes, "Is that your cigar I just passed back there?" No. <laughs> I hadn't even noticed it had fallen out of my hand. It was floating in the river. Okay. And I was only halfway through. I was so pissed. I have homework for you. You need to like pull up Arnold Schwarzenegger okay. and watch all of his movies. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because then you can... You know, like oh, that. I see what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right? you I'm not that? an action hero. What do you want from me? Maybe you should become one. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. Yeah. Do I look like Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> I'm just saying. He does it with a cigar. He can freaking take the gun. But all with the thing. You know what I mean? No? All right. <laughs> You got another news article? I do. I All do. Right. Viaje. Viaje is on the, on, the, uh, on the prowl. Nice. Can't go through a Story Geeks episode without using the word tatuaje or viaje in a sentence. Right? Uh-huh. <laughs> I like the tatuajes, too. Um, so Viaje has that uh, the zombie line. Mm-hmm. Um, they came out with, in, I think they started it in 2017, and they had that uh, antidote. It looked like, a, it's supposed yep. to, the cigar supposed to look like a syringe. Yep. Right? Um, so they're... Coming out with a collector's edition of the red and green zombie. Mm-hmm. Uh, should be coming out this year, before the end of the year. Um, I was going to say this month, but it's before the end of the year. So Halloween. They have not probably, you would think, <laughs> right? It's called the zombie, so you would think it's going to come out in October. Uh, but they have not listed the official date yet. Uh, but it October will, 30th. The collector's edition <laughs> box will have the red and the green zombie in it, mm-hmm. um, and I believe it's going to come in two different boxes, so you can get one or the other or both, obviously, if you want to collect them all. Um, it is... Oh, it's a Nicaraguan Puro, which is like the other one. So it's the blend hasn't changed. It's, that's staying the same, but uh, that's something that's going to be coming out. Um, I would imagine, it's funny you mentioned tatuajes. Wonder if any, I, I didn't look this up, but I'm wondering if you heard anything on the Monster Line, anything coming out from the Monster Line? Um, n- I know, I, uh, yeah. I have not. Uh, I actually have a, 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 I've purchased the Monster Line in a box in, in uh, like Several the times, pudgies or the skinnies. Oh, they, they, they all come out in, the, yeah. in there, and, and I've actually done a whole, the whole set, the whole set. No kidding. And and did that there, and and um, you know, and, and it's tough. Like for me, if I'm gonna go do something like that, it's going to be my first smoke of the day, so I can in my from my experience, sure, like you get the most out of whatever you know, as opposed to, hey, it's my third smoke. I'm ripping through it. It sucked, right? You can't, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like give your palate a rest there, Charlie, right? But, um, yeah, it, 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 it truly is a super cool journey. And if and if you go to your brick and mortar, I encourage you to go there first. But, um, you know, I love the brick and mortar. Ah, we don't do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. You don't like to make money. So, anyway, so you can go online and uh, purchase it. And uh, it'll probably be 70% less than what it would be in a brick and mortar. And guess what? You can give yourself a treat. It doesn't break the bank. The no. whole line. You can buy the whole line and rip through it yeah. in your cadence and take little notes. I had wanted to do a special. Like, I saved uh, all my notes and did a special. And then, like, when I finished it, it wasn't Halloween time. <laughs> and so I wanted to do it, like, not on Halloween time. Getting back to just... And timing. Time is right, right? Any time is right, right? You're smoking cigars and talking about it. So I actually have notes on all of them that I've had from... Uh, I'm thinking about it now that you said 2017. Yeah, it was 2017. It was when I started here on Soy Geeks. And then I ripped through the box probably in early 2018, which is when I started full-time here with, with uh, Security Weekly and Soy Geeks combined. So, yeah, so uh, it was around that time frame. And if you can go online and get the box, dude, and it's like you you... What what I do is uh, I smoke it, write down my notes, and then I try to – well, I don't try to look it up. I look it up, right? Google is amazing. See how close and, you and, are. And, and see how close I am because I, I, I'm, 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 I want to do a live show where uh, people take off the, the uh, rappers, and obviously it would be better if they get, like, all sticks that are moderately the same, right? And I want to be able to define region. 
And I bet you I can. Blind smokes. Like, I want to do, like, a month, because obviously I can't sit there and smoke four smoke. But, like, the first smoke I'll have for the day, come in and do that and rip through it and give the region. I bet you I can. That would be interesting to watch. And I bet you out of ten smokes, I'd probably get nine. So if anybody wants to challenge me to that. I, I was going to say, I hear a wager. Wants, There's a wager coming up. If anybody wants to challenge me to that, email Drew at storygeeks.com. Because he's the one who gets things done around here. Uh, <laughs> it keeps us topic-wise keeps it rolling. going on there. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, 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 I think it would be super cool. Because I can almost taste the characteristics of the different regions. Of the regions. That's quite a palette and if you could pull really that off. it's really tough. It's really tough when we have, because our situation is always changing. Like, mm -hmm. in other words, you know, you have Connecticut's. Now we have this movement of complex Connecticut's with Nicaraguan, Connecticut broadleaf. It's getting a little spicier. You know what I mean? Yeah. The spice could be coming from the broadleaf or it could be coming from Nicaragua. So you could, you could throw some real serious curveballs in well, there. Well, the shape, too. You have to take the shape into consideration. Well, I, I would probably say to make it easy for someone, give use cigars that are all the same shape. You know what I mean? Because if you rip through that, I could, some, some cigars are truly identifiable. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. yeah, that's just my opinion. It's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, so, oh, do you have a rating? Oh, no, that was a news article. No, no, that's a news article. Nice. The Bloody Mary. Yet. The Bloody Mary yet. and the Long Trail kicking in. Good. It's, Good answer. <laughs> it's nice. not even out yet. <laughs> mm. All right. All right. Nice. I got derailed. I love it. All right. Um, I had the EP Carrillo Elite Series Selection Escuro. It is just as tasty as it sounds. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, this was. The uh, a special number six. It's six by fifty-two. Your wrapper is a Mexican San Andreas Asquero. Your binder is Ecuador, and your filler is Nicaraguan. Like stick like that could trip me up, like for sure, because it's really tough for you to freaking define Ecuadorian oh, yeah. binder. Like Nicaragua, I think is is pretty. It's to me, it's like a, a layup. Like you kind of you can kind of say this is. A Nicaraguan stick, right? Um, Honduran has a certain characteristic to my palate. Dominican, certain kind of, Cuban. But like, yeah, yeah, you know. But you start well. Well, Cuban would be that giveaway. I'd look at the cap, right? You know what I mean? I wouldn't have to smoke it. But okay, that's Cuban, and that's where you're like, <laughs> you know what I mean. But freaking, you know. Um, but you know, when when you have Ecuador uh, there, that's probably the least of the characteristics there, but uh, with this cigar, there's no question that your Mexican San Andreas Oscuro wrapper would trump all of the uh, flavors uh, there, especially because most of the flavors come from the wrapper, and then the Nicaragua, but the Ecuadorian, uh, the um, the binder really smooths it out. Um, as these age, just we're finding a lot out with, 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 with E.P. Carrillo, and one of the reasons why I have the privilege to let them age is because Paul... Uh, founder of Story Geeks is a huge fan of E.P. Carrillo. Like, and he has age stuff, and he actually has it categorized by year. Like, he's, and he's like, he's into know, it. He's, he's, it's just, his, it's just gig, right? Um, and, and, and it, 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 it's one of his favorite, it's, it's one of his favorite brands. Um, his, is, I would probably say that's his second favorite brand. I know a lot of them, uh, he likes Paul Gamarian too. Uh, if you go on Story Geeks website, you gotta get into those. Those are super tasty. They, we ripped through boxes of those uh here too but uh anyway this is a six by 52 uh complexity flavor and balance complexity i gave it a seven flavor i gave it a seven and balance i gave it an eight it really really balances out uh it's available in uh four different sizes robusto gordo small churchill especially number six and the uh royale which is six by 52 um i had the robusto gordo which is a five by 54 and for the sake of review, I had the number six, which is a six by 52. Um, you're going to get cocoa and earth right up front. Uh, background notes of wood and cedar. And you, as it kicks in halfway, you start to get a little bit of that pepper. And you got to work the retro hail. Like, you got to work the retro hail cause, uh, there because I think that, that, that San Andreas wrapper kind of really makes it. Balanced and smooth, you right. Yep. Uh, and from there, but I I gave it I gave it a box split. Um, I, I would certainly rip, rip through ten of these a year. There's no question. 
No question. I have to dig to find you one. So, um, give how me long a, was smoke? Was it? Uh, by an hour and thirty minutes. Yeah. Hour oh. and thirty minutes. You know. Expected. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you're you're at, you're at six by fifty two, so it's not super big. I, I, you know, I wouldn't do. I mean, the biggest ring gauge is fifty four that it has. So, um, it's the robusto, um, the robusto, Gordo. So you know. But that fifty fifty two, it's right in my wheelhouse. We, we so you, you mentioned the complexity. What what were your like? Was it complexity in that it changes the flavor throughout? Yeah. So when it starts off, you're gonna get your wood and your cedar, and you're like, okay, cool. Um, and you start to get pepper, and you think it's gonna kick in, and it doesn't. It's just smooth. It doesn't suck. It's just smooth. Yeah. If you want pepper. You would probably go with the EP Carrillo Dusk, right, or uh, uh, another offering by them. But he doesn't make a lot of super strong stuff. Yeah, you don't want you know something what I mean. Stronger. Like the New Wave Reserver is like ultra smooth. So the smoothness from smoking the EP Carrillo New Wave Reserver, one of Paul's go tos, uh, the EP Carrillo Dusk, one of my go tos, and I put the Oscuro in the middle. But the one thing I noticed about the EP Carrillo line is that transition-wise smoothness. There's really not a lot of harshness, right? Even on the dusk, where he goes a little bit um, stronger. You don't have like an in-your-face transition. It's 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 yeah. not it's not it's not Nicaraguan in, in in your face like traditional other stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'd give it a box split. So I I oh for those of you listening because you always complain when I talk too long and oh, I have on. to go back and rewind that stick. The box split was the EP Carrillo Elite Series Selection Oscuro. That's one of the things they always say. Like when well they done. listen to it on audio, I talk, I say it, and I talk about the stick, and then we move on, and they got to go back and rewind. So there you go. <laughs> Noted. Noted. Drew gets lots of emails on that. Uh, well, hey, if you have any complaints, Drew, it's Toki Geeks talk about it. There you go. I like it. <laughs> I'll load them up today. Uh, I, got, I got something a little different. Um, I not only used a Stogie Geeks rating, but I, I added a rating to it, and it'll make sense when I get to the end of it. Nelson creating his own ratings. I yeah, guess, I it, <laughs> it's in the same theme of I'm giving it the Stogie Geeks rating plus. next week on Nelson's Geeks <laughs> or Nelson's Corner. <laughs> well, let's just say it, it's based on the reality of what happened to the stick. Oh. So, <laughs> so I was uh, a small backstory. Uh, I I was Joe knows I had gone out to Vermont to pick up a couple of humidors. Um, met a buddy of mine out in Springfield. So what do we do? Look for a retail shop. I've never been there before, so found this great little retail shop. I actually wish I could give them props. I do not remember. Oh, it was called Cigar Room 2. Cigar Where were you? Springfield. Mass? Yeah. Okay. Cigar Room 2. Unfortunately, here uh, in Massachusetts, they closed down lounges. Yeah. So the lounge was closed, but the retail shop was open. So anyway... I go in there, and she and I were talking. I told her what I like, what I don't like, and I said, I want to try something new. So she directed me towards this company in Florida called Bloodline, mm. the Bloodline OPA, and they had three uh, different wrappers, and I went with the original uh, because that she said that was the first stick she had ever smoked, so I said, I'll try that too. Uh, it's a Connecticut wrapper, and the binder filler is undisclosed. They wouldn't disclose what it was. Maybe I'll bring it in, Joe, and have you tell me what it is. Um, it was totally different for me. It was a box-pressed Lancero, which... Huh. Right? Yeah. When do you normally see that? Yeah. Seldom. Uh, seldom. It was the first one I had actually ever had my hands on. Yeah, yeah. So, um, totally different, but I, you know, and I encourage all the Stogie Geeks, always try something different, right? Smoke what you like, but once in a while, throw in something different. So I tried it right away. Super, super tight draw. I mean, but I, I went from a punch to a uh -oh. V-cut to uh -oh. a guillotine cut. I literally used all three cutters <laughs> on this thing. <laughs> so not, we're, we weren't off to a good start mm. with this stick. We were just not off to a good start. So went through, uh, started, you know, lit it, obviously, started smoking it. Um, it was a, a medium bodied cigar from the beginning. Um, not harsh, not anything. It was just very basic flavors, um, earthy, little bit of, I almost want to say vanilla cocoa going on. Um, and then I hit the middle. 
Uh-oh. So when I got into that <laughs> I'm going to sit back. <laughs> when I got into the second third of that stick, and I had a friend of mine in the truck with me, and he, he was smoking something, too, much better than what I was. Um, I said, I said, hey, man, this thing tastes like an ashtray. It just went from oh boy. this, like, cocoa <laughs> buttery, like, it was okay stick to I, I wanted to throw it out the window. So... I threw it out the window. No. So it was it was not a good stick. I I don't recommend it. So obviously this one I'm giving it. This is where I'm, I came up with my own rating. It's lawn mulch, lawn mulch, yep. and because I threw it on the Massachusetts Turnpike, it's a pothole filler. A pothole filler. Yeah, that sucker flew right out the window. Yeah. And then I uh, I lit up a cohiba. <laughs> That's what I did mm. to come out of that mess. Threw that one out too. <laughs> <laughs> nah, come on, come on. Some of the cohiba, those Seaglos 2s are fantastic. Okay. I'm a big fan of those. You, you like them? Fan, you don't like any cohibas. No, I like cohibas. All right, all right, all right. You know, I think of Red Royale. Royale? Yeah. Cohiba Royale. Royale, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm digging that stick. Yeah, but this Bloodline? Yeah. I'm can't. sorry. You and can't. honestly, not, not just that, the... I don't know if anyone has ever smoked. I'd I'd love to hear from you if you guys can email Joe and let let us know if you've ever smoked the box pressed Lancero. I'd I'd like to find others because it was it was definitely different. Had never had you know we were just talking about the mouth feel and the hand feel. Yeah, totally different. Yeah, never smoked anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, sorry you had a bad experience. Yeah, yeah, it happens. You know I mean? Once in a blue moon, it happens. But it's a pothole filler. Yeah, it's out on the mass turnpike filling a crack right now. I'm sure. There you go. I like it. I like it. Stogie Geeks, um, if you want 74% off MSRP, can save over $200 at $3.49 a stick. Wow. Email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. This promo is only good from September 16 through September 30th. You email me. I'll give you the link. We'll give you the promo. And... You will get sixty nine ninety nine, uh, twenty sticks shipped to your door. That's a hell of a Shipping deal. Shipping included, and I only have one more week of promo before I've been sticking this in the humidor, this brick, and put in promo only. And then before we so rip no apart, one touches it, <laughs> we rip apart the box. I think I'm gonna do a, a promo and then start ripping apart. This is the longest I've held on to something. It's been like. Five weeks. Are you doing okay? I'm all right. Not touching it. <laughs> I'm all right. Yeah, might be, there might be 18 in there. Might have stuck some paper in there for props, but no one knows the wiser. See nothing, say nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, do you have any more news? Oh, yeah. Okay. Can I talk about the Elder Lector? I'm dying to hear about it. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so excited to talk about this. Um... The institution of the elector and uh, translation, elector is the reader. Oh, okay. And um, what's super cool is, uh, as we know, this is the 125th year for the J.C. Newman factory um, in their anniversary. And they had a long list of events. <laughs> That have happened or that was scheduled. And, sure. of course, um, some of us are on lockdown. <laughs> Boy, did our world change mid-March, right? Um, but one of the things I think that is so cool is that J.C. Newman is, has a, a, a space available. It's located on the factory's uh, third floor, right? And um, it's where they – when they used to um, roll the cigars – there would always be a reader who would read to the workers and teach them different things, a variety of things. For example, they would read novels oh, and wow. they would learn, or they would, some of them would even learn English, right? Uh, they would learn, read sports scores. They would go through um, different how to, um, how to, uh, not household how-to, but like, like 
we call them life hacks, modern day life hacks. Oh, sure. Right? So, yeah, there you go. So, I had the vi- the visual in yeah. my head. I'm like, how do I put it, right? Uh, so, so you know, and, and, and the elector would, would, would uh, show up at the factory. They would have different ones that would come in. And some of them back in the day would make $20 a week was the average pay. Wow. All right? But the ones in the factories at J.C. Newman, they made up to, some of them made up to 100 if they were good. But you had to hustle. So you got to look at the schedule, right? You got to think about this concept, right? Concept is, and I'm making the schedule up, right? From uh, 9 to 11, you're going to read a novel at this factory, this floor. And then maybe you take a break and then you go downstairs and from 12 to 2 or whatever you break up, you read sports scores or life hacks or whatever you do right. and whatnot. And, and um, uh, then there was a, um, a kind of like a, a I don't, it's like a modern day strike for the electors because some of them were actually reading racy, their words, not mine, books. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so some of the female workers were complaining about the awkwardness. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking, okay, they probably read Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, what were they right, reading? Right, yeah. right, right, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but, but again, like they would read stuff. And then also, like they didn't like the way that they um, were – were portrayed and it wasn't just against women like it was with, with men too like some subjects and whatnot like if a male was characterized as being weaker or whatever in the novel so it got a little taboo a, 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 not not a taboo for the day yeah, right sure taboo for the day it made workers feel uncomfortable and then did that there and it led to an exodus of um electors to become television and radio news broadcasters no kidding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I was like, huh. And I was like, wow, if I had this back in 2015, I probably would have named my show, instead of Cigar Club Radio, I would have still named it Elector, Elector, especially with talk radio. It would have been a cool name. You know yeah. what I mean? But um, I, I think that's super cool. Like, I was just like, wow, like, you know. And then some of them made $100 a week when they hustled different factories and all of that stuff. Um, the point of the me bringing this up here on the the episode is jc newman drew newman as we've talked about him multiple times um not only with the yagua but with 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 the america he's incorporating this back into their factory like he's incorporating the concept i'm sure he's gonna have censored books it's not gonna be right and all of that stuff but like i think that that's so cool so um post covid when we can walk the streets again and, and and do that there, and you can go visit them. You can actually go to the third floor, and there'll be an elector and there, and, and there. I'm sure it's going to be certain times and all of that. But more importantly, you can also lease out the room for an event. Oh wow! So they're giving like something for the community. You mean? Yeah, like yeah. you know how you would really like, like. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, my son's birthday. <laughs> right. Happened in a cigar yeah, factory. Like, you know what I mean? I don't think a mama bear is going to put the hot pots on that, right? But, no, I'm thinking, like, like, like no, like, you know how you would have a community room? Like, you rent a community room for, for something. Sure. You know what I mean? Doing that there. And I'm thinking, wow, that's a super cool idea. Like, you know, what if you have a bachelor party and you're down in Ybor City or Tampa? How great would that be? Up and, and then you can rent the room, have it catered, go there, there, hang out there, have cigars. Hop in a limo if you gotta go somewhere else, but you know what I mean. Just but, saying. But like, I, I think, I think it'd be like, I don't know. I just think that'd be super cool. So, do you know the the readings that that happen in in all the regions? Or was that happening in Honduras, Nicaragua, mm. Dominican Republic? That's actually a great question. I wonder if it was a common practice among. It's the actually factories. a great question. I actually pulled this off of the uh, J.C. Newman website, or if you follow me on uh, Facebook or uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm at Joe Hosempa on Twitter, and I think it's Jay Hosempa on Facebook. But if you type in Joe Hosempa or just do hashtag Story Geeks, it'll come up. Uh, I posted it a couple days ago anyway, oh, so cool. there's a link to, and uh, uh, I'll link to there. I usually, sometimes I do a prequel as if something I really just want to even mention. Sure. 
<laughs> it reminds me just to scroll through my profile. So I know. Oh yeah, I want to talk about that. You know, so yeah, <laughs> and and I I just think that that's a super cool idea. And 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 on the J C Newman website, all the all the link I posted, it talks. You know, it has a cool, super cool picture. And and they would learn stuff, and then you had people rolling and learning, and they would learn English, or they would learn sports scores, or they would get no current events, and and they would read the news, or they would read um, books and whatnot. And yeah, I, I just think that that's that's super cool because that's awesome. you know I, uh, again we in, in in the world of technology, right? And believe me, um, outside of story geeks, I'm in it, right? In the world of technology, it's amazing how disconnected you become from that human element sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and it's in true. some cases, this might have been the only English that some workers might have only received. Heard, yeah. You know what I mean? So you know, and they got educated in other things too. Yeah, that's why I was. I'm, I'm obviously going to go read this now because I'm yeah. a nerd. I'm going to check this out later to see if they did it in other places. That that sounds yep. really cool. I'm actually going to reach out to um to the family and and see if I could get a series on this because I don't know why. I'm just intrigued by it. Yeah, it's really interesting. You know what I mean? Like it just it's one of those things in in in, in my fast-paced world where I'm like, "Oh man, that's so cool." Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then some people apply this is like, "That's really cool." Like, uh, I don't know. I just cuz you you pass on knowledge. And uh, for some people, I mean, rolling a cigar uh is no easy task. I've been to demos. Um I've attempted it myself. That's not a good idea. I would be fired. Um it, but you know it's tedious, it's monotonous, yeah. and it could have been an escape, especially if they were reading a novel. You know what I mean? Obviously, one that didn't cause a strike. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, J.C. Newman is 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 instituting the uh, El Lector. Uh, I posted that there. I just I just I don't know. Um, and and for a while, like you got to think about it. Like if you're an El Lector and you have a business, like. My question would be like, you know, like they were like they knew like the pulse of the town. They knew the news. Oh yeah. They did do research for the news. You know what I mean? I wonder if like businesses jumped on that for like you know um, their marketing. advertising marketing. Yeah. For their, but uh, they they had to have, like had to have. This like, reading's brought to you cause, by because they because. <laughs> Because they they may um, probably not exactly like that, but well, I, I see where you're going. <laughs> but most of them, when when they got rid, they they made it easier because now this whole things as people do in labor unions, right? Oh, that's a distraction. Let's just get rid of it. It's like no, no, no. Let's just fix the freaking root of the cause, and mm -hmm. maybe it's not a distraction. But corporate knows everything and likes to move forward, and we live in a disposable society then, let alone now, right? right? And so, you know, they they got rid of them, and most of them tra transitioned. Into television and radio, that's 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 even more interesting. That yeah. they just they excelled in their career from doing that. Well, you think from about sitting it, in a factory reading. You, you've, I mean, you were at the time. Timing was everything, right? You know, the f early fifties. TV, TV starting to come in. What did the news person do? Yeah. They're a reader. They're just reading off the <laughs> teleprompter. I mean, even if you watch tonight's news or this afternoon's news, they'll turn on. They're a reader. Like they're reading yeah. off the teleprompter. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I I just I just thought it was super cool. Um, you know, uh, it, it led to a, uh, on the website. It led to a, um, a little bit of democracy uh, for Little Havana. And how that trickled into Little Havana too, but obviously it's on a much. If you've been to J.C. Newman Factory versus Little Havana, completely much smaller scale. Yeah, like completely much smaller scale. I'm sure the Electra probably did it for some sticks. You know what I mean? If oh, you can speak English, cool. Can I have a couple sticks? Yeah, cool. Oh, I'm sure, at a minimum they got that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it just says the uh, the Electra's daily schedule was split between classic literature in the mornings and local news and baseball scores in the evenings. Huh. No, they're also working morning through evening. Right. Right? Most lecturers spent lunch breaks hastily translating the latest editions of English newspapers into Spanish or Spanish into English. Right? Uh, indeed, many lecturers um, were... Uh, learned men that spent their time editing bilingual newspapers. So they also were 
editing the news as they would go along. Yeah, they along, were translating. As, as they were going along yeah. and, and then doing that there. So it's like a fascinating, to me, it's just a fascinating underground business model that is still relevant today. Maybe not so much reading in cigar factories, but it led to bigger jobs that right. are still around today. Yeah. There you go. Institution of the Elector. Check it out. If you want me to email it to you, joehstorygeeks.com. That's very cool. I'm glad I, I'm glad I sat here, or I, I hope people appreciated it. That's a really interesting story. You know? I love that kind of shit. Where they, that's oh, yeah. totally uh, different. I didn't even know that happened. Yeah, yeah. I knew the electors did. I didn't know that. I, I was fascinated to find out that they made the transition into television. It launched radio. careers for them. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. Well. And they had labor disputes then, so <laughs> not much has changed. Anyway, people like to smoke cigars around labor disputes. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> I got to admit, I was surprised when you said that there were issues with the content mm. of some of the stuff they were talking about. Because I'm assuming this started 40, 50 years ago, yeah. right? Yeah. This concept. And even back then, they were offended by some literature, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know how we're going to find out what they read, but <laughs> who knows? Yeah. I bet you there's examples out there somewhere of what they were reading. Some historian. Yeah. Some historian would, would... And that's what I love about this show. Like, random stuff I talk about. And, like, four to six months later, I'll get a random email. Like, hey, I remember you talked about this, and I found someone. Like, like we... we there's more info? We, oh, no. Like, we, we don't... We... Business model... Uh, very seldomly are we like, hey, come on, Story Geeks, come on, Story Geeks, come on, Story Geeks. Right? It's a machine, right? Like, we met Richard Carlton Hacker. I've talked about this before, an author who's 79 years old, 74 years old and whatnot. Like, he, his publicist was like, listen, like, I think you'd be a cool match because you have a little bit of that historian edge to you. And... I told you a story with the Opus Sexes yeah. and the flooded fields. Yeah. So, so like, you know, like, and, and I was like, oh, great. And, 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 um, yeah, definitely like, and so that organically so to came to, to him us. And sit down with him. No, he was on Story Geeks. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it's an episode. Richard Carlton Hacker. Uh, look it up. It's super cool. Um, there you go. Episode, I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's in the search engine. Search for it. Yeah. People ask me, like, what's what's uh, like a cool episode like when they when they go on story geeks for the first time and they're like you know what episode is good i'm like they're all good <laughs> of course <laughs> hey i've been doing the same thing i've been going yeah. back and listening I, I think i've gone back as far as 2014 2014 yeah yeah uh the episode with richard carlton hacker is uh episode 302 so anyway um what's next news or sticks you pick. Go on news. All right. Sticks? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go on sticks. <laughs> uh, yeah, one last piece. And actually, this, w this one I was really excited about. Um, I'm a big Charter Rogue fan. Mm. Um, as far as, like, everyday sticks, they're fantastic. Uh, I have a couple boxes. Love the Maduros. Charter Rogue Maduros. They're fantastic. Well, AJ, um, I'm sorry, not AJ Fernandez. Uh, Foundation, mm -hmm. they make them at the AJ Fernandez factory. Foundation's coming out with a, a new wrapper uh, for Charter Oak. Uh, should be out this month. Uh, it is the Habano wrapper that they're coming out with. So totally stoked for that. Um, like I said, I really like their, their Maduro wrapper. I will definitely be trying this Habano wrapper. Um, it's going to be, it's an Ecuadorian Habano, mm -hmm. which I've had. And, you know, you see that on a lot of sticks too. Uh, with the Nicaraguan binder and filler. Uh, which their other sticks have, so it's going to come in six sizes. So that's that's a lot of lot of smoke right there. They're going to have six different sizes uh, for this stick, and it, again, it should be available for purchase uh, at the end of this month. I can't say enough about the Maduros. Those, as far as I mean, I wouldn't even say just everyday sticks. They they just for me, there's there's some sticks out there that could be priced more, and I think the Charter Oak is one of them. I just think that they could easily charge more for that. So to me, it's a premium steak. It's it's delicious. Yeah. It smokes well. It burns well. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and 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 that, and that's a logical, natural transition for them to uh, to offer the habano. To offer the habano yeah. next. That's just that's just a that's just you know that's just cigar, organic growth. You know, doing your thing. Yeah. And, and experimenting with the blend and doing that there. Um. You know. Um. It, it, it will smoke differently, and I think like the expectations were 
was so high with like if you've ever had a charter with Maduro, like y- y- a lot of people might shy away from it if they're at a brick and mortar because of its price point. It's priced like significantly low, like significantly low, and um, some consumers would be like, oh, "That's good," you know what I mean? Because I'm used to getting. You know, paying this. Yeah, amount. no, I agree. And then once they've had it, they're like, "Holy cow!" Like that's always been. Yeah. No matter where I am, no matter which shop I go to, that's always been the. You know, I kind of shied away from that stick, and then I tried it, and I'm like, "Wow, I'm glad I did." And um, since the Maduro is such a good stick, uh, tasty, box worthy all day. Yep. Uh, st- uh, still geek rating. I I wonder. Um. How smooth it's gonna be. The Habano? Yeah, yeah. Habano's tough for some people. Yeah. The, the consumer wise, right? Because you know they either like your Connecticut Maduro. Getting into Habano, I, I think palate wise it's tricky, but more importantly, I think consumer wise it's trickier. To like how on many on the s- shelf? On the shelf, you're saying? Well, well, yeah, from a consumer behavior perspective, right, sure, like like sure. you know, like like they might go towards Connecticut or Maduro first, right? And what's this? And then and then, but but it's a natural to to go to the Escura wrap, uh, the the Habano wrapper, right? And then go there, and that puts them in the line. I'm sure it matches the other sizes of what they came out with there. Yeah, yeah, right. And but you. Because the Chata Oak Maduro is so good, in my opinion, and multiple opinions of people I spoke with, that Habano needs to be spot on. Yeah, I mean, and it's going to get a lot of reviews going out. I mean, it's going to be make or break. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. But they, they, they're no slouches. Hey, if you haven't tried a Maduro, though, definitely try it. Oh yeah, Chato Joe, Maduro, Joe yeah. spot on. It's yeah, it's super tasty. It's an inexpensive great stick. Like I said, to me, they could easily charge. Don't please foundation. Don't charge more for the stick, but <laughs> it it is a really good stick. Actually, the first one I I still remember the first one I ever had. It was that good. It was at at the local lounge that I belong to. Uh, went in, wanted to try something different. Saw the under uh, the the Charter Oak, and like let me try this thing. It, it was fantastic. I immediately went and bought more. Yeah, it was that good. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is real good for sure. Um. No and rating that's the on news. that. That's the news. That's the news. I like it. I like it. I have a couple more sticks I have to review. You have a couple more sticks? Sure. All right. Moving right along. Uh, I had the CAO Bones. Do you have this yet? I have not had the Bones. It's pretty new. I have one, so don't leave the building without you. I can easily get I know where it is. <laughs> I don't have to dig for that. Um, I had the CAO Bones. Um, Rappers Connecticut Broadleaf. Uh, binder is Connecticut Shade, uh, and you have Honduran Tobacco uh, along with some Nicaraguan um, uh, Esteli filler with Dominican Polito in there. Um, it's available in 20 box counts. Uh, CAO, it, it, I, I talked about this with Drew uh, making four or five months ago uh, or more, but um, like CAO in two thousand eight, nine, ten. I mean, they were hot. Like when they had the Triviata, and then they had like they had the Brasilia Americana, the Italia, and right. a couple. Like they, they like from a retail brick and mortar. They they were like like super hot, and um, you know, uh, they did cool events, went to some events and whatnot. And then like it's not a brand that like like. It's a brand that's popular. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's wicked popular online. No yeah. question. Right? But it was more popular with the brick and mortars then. And their presence, I don't know. Like they, It's like... You don't see them as much in brick and mortar. I don't. I don't. You know? And, and they're, they're good sticks. They're really, really good sticks. Uh, they have another one called uh, Pylon that came out as well. I had that. I'm more impressed with the bones. So I'll talk about the bones uh, there. Um. Yeah. In regards to notes for this stick, I mean, you know, you you started off, and like I can't get because I've been smoking cigars for a while. I can't get the the old 
CAO presence on my palate out of my head. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know You're still I mean? going so, there. So it's like it's like I can't, and it's like, man, it's like I always feel like it's missing something whenever I have something from them. It's missing something. I said that about the flathead. Then there was another one that was named after an auto pot. I'm having a brain fart. It's on the site. Uh, you know, and, 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 and whatnot, and, and uh, it was like a Spock plug. And, and, and it's just, I don't know, when I smoke it, when I smoke this smoke, it's like, okay, I get a little bit of blast of pepper, but I want more. Um, smoke content's good. You get a little bit of s- citrus, but then it fades. You get a little bit of wood, and it fades. It's almost and like they're teasing you. And it, just, it, just, it just never came to what it wanted to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, it didn't go where you thought it was going. And, and and I try to get the old notes out of my head, but I just can't. And 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 I try. Uh, I would give it a fiver. I've had five, so I clearly like the stick. Sure. But I keep searching within the stick for something new, and I'm not getting it. And I'm trying. And like I've even like like tried to slow it down and and whatnot. But you know, you get a little bit of black cherry in there, but it's it just it's just uh. It's not uh, like if you look at that complexity, flavor, and balance on a scale of one to ten, flavor I'd give it like a five. Balance I'd give it like a good seven or eight. It's mm. balanced, yeah, but um, it's not really. It just doesn't. It just doesn't stand out. Which kind of reminds me of like the brand now and brick and mortar presences. You know what I mean? Not like really it, there. It just, it just, it just kind of flat. And 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 I really hope they make a comeback. Like yeah. I really hope that, you know what I mean? Like they figure that out. Or maybe it's the business model. We always talk about that. They're selling sticks online, doing their thing, making money. And that might, right? That might be that, there. Like the thing. that could be the model, like, right? You know what I mean? But they need something like, like I remember. Like I said, 2008. Like those Brazilians. You ever have those Brazilians? Okay. America. Like the people freaking were like. Crazy over those, right? It was like freaking like soccer met like League of Nations, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. because because it featured the cigars features was from that area for the most part. You know what I mean? Like you know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, and I it was know. a connection. Yeah, it was. A, there you go. That's what I'm looking for. And and that, and then that's all what premium cigar smoking. I think is a lot of its connection. You connected to the stick. You liken the story. Or it freaking just is phenomenal right. on your palate, and you can't get off of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know that's interesting. That that is true with most cigars, right? You you always go back to it because of either the connection or the flavors, mm-hmm. or maybe it was a moment, right? Maybe you right. you smoked it at a particular time, a particular thing, and now you're always making that connection to it. And then you remember same way you make a connection when you toss it out the window. <laughs> yep, I'm always gonna remember that connection. So right, right. So so that was my initial thought. Then when I did some research on their website, I was like, yeah, that's about right. The bones is come from the website. The bones is about kicking back with your friends with a cold beer in your hand. Life is good today. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> like, you know that song. Anyway, <laughs> adios and fios, codios. Right. Anyway, uh, the bones is about kicking back with your friends with a cold beer in your hand, playing a game, smoking, grilling. Maybe talking a little trash and having a, the time of your life. That's how they describe it. Did you feel that way smoking it? I, I would have tried to do a little bit better than that, but I'd give it a fiver. Adios and vaya con Dios. Fair enough. Next stick. <laughs> and I'll give you one in the pylon too on your way out. So. I'm going to go to my number one. This is my... Number one. My number Wait, one Wait, your number stick. one go-to or your number one stick this week? This is my one, number one stick ever. <sighs> oh, boy. I know. He's going to... I'm already... Here he, comes the credibility factor. I am ready for him to tear me apart. I, hey, everyone Next is week different pellets. on Story Geeks, we interview Jason. <laughs> 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 um, my favorite stick... It, it currently, right? I, I, I think I had my first one in the spring, this spring, uh, 2020. So, and it's still maintaining that number one spot for me. Is the uh, the Roma Craft Black Irish? Oh yeah, Roma Craft Black Irish. It's a five by fifty six robusto, Connecticut broadleaf with the barbershop. Uh, it's got a candela. It's a it's a Connecticut broadleaf and candela wrapper. So it's brown and green, um, Cameroon binder, Nicaraguan filler. 
Um, it's a, I'd say it's a medium to full, maybe closer to full, but it's a, it's a medium to full. Uh, it stands out right away when you see it because of that barbershop pole, right? The, a lot of st- there's a lot of sticks out there that have the barbershop mm-hmm. concept, but this one is, I think this is the only one I've seen that has the, I've seen green and green. Uh, what is that? The um, Erin Gobra, whatever. I forget what that is. There's there's like an Irish themed cigar. It's green and green, but this one's brown and green. It's come out in March. Uh, <laughs> I think so, maybe. <laughs> um, but this this black Irish is it it totally stands out. If you saw it, you're not going to see it because it's not in any retail shops. Uh, I believe they only ever made six thousand of these things. Um, yep. And I have scrimped saved, begged, borrowed, whatever I could do to get these sticks. I've acquired a, acquired a couple dozen. Uh, but the the smoke, is it's a nice complex stick. It has a beautiful, perfect burn. I mean, literally, I have never had to touch up a black Irish ever. Um, the burn, it's like razor sharp, the, the burn on it. Um, awesome experience. Uh, I say when you look at it, um, it looks like you're looking into hell. Like it burns so hot, mm. um, but but it's not. Like it just I don't know what it is. What the hell is going inside that cigar? But you look at it, it looks like the pit of hell. Um, but that thing smokes awesome. It's 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 like I would describe the flavors as it's like an earthy mocha hay. Okay, does that sound bananas? That that's what it is. It's an earthy mocha hay. That's how I would describe it. Um, and that, I, I will. I, I, I've you've gifted me one, and I would just probably put a semicolon after that. Yeah, it's got some sharp nuances to it. it towards the towards the end. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. I, I, I can't make heads or tails of it. What I'd it have is? to smoke another one. To, yeah. To, but it had some like whoa, like at the end had a little bit of sharp. No, I, I would it. agree, and I I agree with Joe. I I I can't describe it either. It definitely changes tor- towards the end, but it's. That that mocha hay earthiness um, doesn't go away. Uh, you you get that throughout. Uh, it's a nice long smoke too. I mean, it's it's five by fifty six, but I think on average, literally takes me two hours to smoke the thing. It, it's it's a fantastic long smoke. Um, so, like I said, I mean, good luck finding them. Hopefully, you have a friend of a friend of a friend who can get them. If you can get your hands on one, definitely recommend trying one. Um, so this for me. This is my Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. This is my fighting Chuck Norris stick. Yeah. I didn't cool. think I, I'd ever get one, but I was I was looking and I'm like, this this is my Chuck Norris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It, well, Roman Craft makes good stuff. They're yeah, you know, they make good stuff. Isn't he out? Did he leave? Leave? Did he leave? Did I hear that? Is that right? What's is that? That rumor? Is that right? What? Did he leave? He's gone. From Roman no, Craft? no, 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 no. No. Yeah. Uh, like but one one fuse f- companies. Right. One footnote. Um, if you can't get your hands on one, uh, I do recommend the Roma Craft Cranium, uh, which is very similar to the Black Irish. It's not hundred. It's not like for like, but it is the closest stick that you can get your hands on that is close to as good as that. So definitely recommend that. And that one's box worthy all day. I could do a whole thing on that one another time. Which one was that? The uh, the Roma Craft Cranium. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Oh, what do you got? Uh, Danny Vasquez is departing from Ro- Ro- Roma Craft. As of when? Like leaving, leaving? Yeah, this this year. Oh I thought, wow! I thought, I thought I heard that right. Wow! In my Rolodex of in your Rolodex of info. In my Rolodex of info, and it's been confirmed. So wow! Yeah, yeah. Which they'll be on. To, don't worry. I like their stuff. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah. It's, you know. If you know him, tell him to pick up his voicemail. Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, I had the uh, Long Live the King Mad Mofo Super Toro. It's and, a mouthful. And I was like, where did you get these? Because you walk in the Brian shop. You really don't expect to get some stuff, but you get six eight five wood lawns and long live the king mad mofo super Star. It's in there right now. Yeah, yeah, it's in there. Um, uh, uh, it's in there, and people are like, "Is that good?" I'm like, uh, "No, this is great," but 
you don't like smoking cigars. You're just like hanging out at the cigar shop, so uh, don't smoke it because they're all mine. I told Brian, I was like, yo, <laughs> I'm ordering two. two. Put me down for two boxes. It's that good. So you know the... Um, <laughs> you already know the rating, <laughs> right? Uh, you already know the rating. But yeah, uh, this is um, a uh, San Andreas Maduro wrapper from Mexico. This would be, you could fool Joe on this. Binder is Indonesia. Because when you first smoke it, I'm like, damn, this is different. This is tasty. I like where this is going. And, uh, yeah, your binder is Indonesia. Uh, Domini- uh, Philip, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and USA from Pennsylvania. So, uh, interesting mix. Yeah. Caldwell again does not disappoint. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like. Uh, I know how you are super into Romacraft. Like, I, I'm, I'm into Caldwell. Like, super into Caldwell. Yeah. wasn't wasn't too hot on the collaboration thing. You know what I mean? But whatever. Uh, this here, you get when you first light it. You're gonna get um, pepper, like poof, but then it fades. And then it transitions into almost like a leather, a little bit of earth, um, zero cedar, um, and, and I can't even say like classic like tastings because you have a lot going on in that cigar. It truly is uh, a unique experience. Uh, you get a little bit of peanut tasting like like that there. Yeah. So you know, not peanut butter, but like nut there. Right, you know what I mean? That makes yeah. sense. Nuttiness, yeah. Nuttiness there. Uh, it's available in uh, four different sizes. You have the Magnum six by sixty. I didn't have that. You have the MF, uh, the the Mad Mofo Bellicoso, uh, five in in uh, five and five and a half by fifty two. Uh, you had the Super Toro, which is what I use for review because I have already blown through eight of them. Uh, that's a six by fifty four. I had that obviously, and I had the Corona, which is five and uh, three fourths by forty three. That is so freaking tasty as well. Uh, limited production. Uh, you only uh, total number of cigars leases is, is, is seventy five thousand. So uh, get on those. Yeah. Um, there, because um, I don't think that um, y- a lot of people will be enjoying them for long so is it a newer line uh no 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 it's been around since since 2018 yeah yeah 2018 um i'm i'm 99 percent sure 2018 um wow release date september 2018 i am yeah good. i don't question you anymore i'm i'm, uh, I'm good <laughs> i'm good i'm good i'm good wow that's crazy um yeah and then uh got into some some like towards the end you know how sometimes it gets leathery because you've yeah. been you've been Chomping on it, whatnot, gets graham crackery. It's what? freaking awesome. It's really? like sweet, awesome tasting. Is I absolutely that's how it ends. The, the crazy cigar. It's Holy crazy. Shit. Go get like I'm. I'm going there uh, after af- this. After this, and going to do a half one. Um, Ditto. I'm um, okay. Cool. Then and there you go. Oh, so much for that hard stop. Then. <laughs> Right, you had a hot stop, right? Look at, see, you told me. See, look at the time. Right? I can talk on the phone yeah, on right? the car. Uh, it's yeah, fine. Right. It's fine. Like, Excuse me, I gotta, I gotta have this mad mofo right away. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Um. And then towards the end, 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 it mellows out. It's so weird. It's so. It's like the reverse. It was almost like I yeah, you cut it the it. wrong way. Yes. <laughs> it the wrong way you know what i mean you i, don't I typically checked. get that because i'm not a band guy anyway like like i i cut light and past the first the band comes off it's just it's just my thing right always been i don't like smoking with bands on them it just drives, just drives me crazy and um which there probably should be other things that drive me crazy more than that but that really drives me yeah. crazy and it's like it's like I was like, did, did I like this thing? <laughs> right? Because it, it transitions weird. It's so tasty. Downside, you it uh, you have your lighter handy with you. A few touch you know? ups. It happens here on the show where I have like four. Well, I have three lighters here, and I'm always looking because I look. I like to light it with my lighter, even though I have one here, one here, yep. one here, one there, right? Yeah. And I'm always like, oh, it's like this on the show because I I don't know why, but you know. Um, you 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 just have to keep a lighter handy. Uh, awesome, awesome. 
I wouldn't go to the Gordo because that's just me. Yeah. But um, you know that um, what's the what's the size? Not super. I think you said five by no, 50s. no, no. Super Toro. Yeah. Was the size right? But the uh, but the Corona is uh, five and three fourths by forty three, and it's it's just it's completely it's 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 awesome. So I give it a box worthy. Yeah, for sure. Sounds like it. You know what I mean? Like, two box I, I mean, I mean, I bought two boxes. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not gonna super stretch it and say, oh wow, you know, it's limited. But it's limited. But seventy five thousand sticks is 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 a good number. Yeah. For it to They're be out there. For to, to for it to be out there and whatnot. And Caldwell, I, I mean, if you ever had a chance to meet them, like, I mean, it's totally awesome. Like, totally awesome people. Had them on Cigar Club Radio. Um. Uh don't think I interviewed him for Story Geeks. I should probably get on that. Um, and and just like, you know, laid back, brings us sticks. Uh, again, we started the show with this. That's crazy. About the artistry from the Alec Bradley yeah, letters yeah, and all lighter, that yeah. stuff. And, and um, you know, they, 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 they outsource their artwork. Um, besides cigars, they have, like, really high-end artwork as well that they get into oh wow and stuff like that so yeah. it's just super cool it's like to me it's kind of like a like a okay I, I i am i own a premium cigar company and we produce good stuff but i'm also into this and you incorporate your other likes into your company i think that you know can only, you can only be so lucky yeah to have a business model right. like that i got a new stick i'm gonna try today mm. Mm. yeah it is uh the long live the king mad mofo super toro What's the average price on that sucker? It's <sighs> a good question. Uh, you're you're in that twelve to fourteen. Yeah, you're in that twelve to fourteen, so it's a buck or two more. But it's Caldwell, so Caldwell's a buck or two more uh, as as to what they are anyway. So it's not it's not ridiculous, right? Uh, outside of the range of what of what Caldwell has for their off- offerings. Excellent. Any more news? I want a news. Any more sticks? I got one more. And then there we go. We'll do one more stick, and I guess we'll wrap up. We're going to Cuba. Cuba? We're going to Cuba. It's not the Bahique, right? It is not. Okay, cool. It is not. <laughs> it is. I've tried different. Talked about that enough on my show. On, on my show. Ooh. Really? On, on the show, yeah. The Bahique. Bahique? Bahique, yeah. Bahique, yeah. Um, I've tried <laughs> different Partagas. Uh, for a little while, I was a Partagas Ooh. Series D number five guy. Yeah. And Red then, label, super cool taste. And then I don't know. Has an orange shoe in the band. I love those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is still that. Um, but I don't know why. I shifted away from the five, and I started to go into the four. A little longer. Mm-hmm. Um, so this that's what this review is. It's the uh, Series D number four, Partagas. So obviously, wrapper binder filler. It's all Cuban. Um, it was a five by 50. Um Beautiful. I mean, one of the things that stood out, um, besides the band, the band definitely, you can recognize that band anywhere. You see that band. You may not know exactly which one it is, but you know that's Partagas. Yes. Because you see that band. Um, and uh, the it was like just beautiful, like minimal veins. Like the rapper almost looked perfect on it. It's, it, it, is, it, it, it is a perfect rapper. Right. And, and did you notice the rapper itself has like a red hue yes, to it? Yes, it does. Okay, yeah. 100% it yeah. does. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was told by my doctor I don't need glasses, so <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just making sure I'm not calling. My wife says either. I need my hearing checked. <laughs> so does mine. Right? <laughs> yeah, I think all husbands have the same hearing problem. Um, it's a full-bodied uh, robusto, and it's funny you said the red hue uh, on the on the flavors. I get right only in the beginning. I get a little bit of cherry. Mm-hmm. Right? right, right. It's it's banging. Right, yeah. A little bit of cherry. Um, like a woody, I, I literally wrote down woody cedar. That's what came to mind was a woody cedar. And then it goes into like a spicy cocoa for the, for the rest of the stick. Um, did you bullet? Uh, I did. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, bullet cut, I bullet cut most of my sticks mm-hmm. unless it's like something like a perfect, like an odd shape, a pyramid or, yep. or yeah, uh, torpedo, whatever. Um, this actually of their Series D is their their po- most popular line. I didn't realize that. The number four. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought it was the five, actually. I, I would have guessed the five. Yeah, 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 but apparently it's the number four, uh, at least as of the most re- uh, recent article I read last night. Uh, so if you, can get, um, if you can't get your hands, because obviously we could have a whole discussion about Cuban cigars, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the myths. I almost was going to consider a segment to offer on... 
the myth busting buying Cuban cigars in the United States. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't really know. They think they can't get them. They think they can't bring them back. There's all this, this mystique around it, and mm-hmm. not everyone realizes that you, you can get them. You can get them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just you can't sell them in the United States. But if you can't get your hands on one, um, what I did find, and I tested this myself, the my father's number one is actually a very similar blend to the Series D number four. Um, so if you can't get your hands on one, you can try that. But I would highly recommend this right now. My favorite part of this, uh, by far. Um, interesting little footnote on this. So they actually dropped this line back in the 60s um, because of the size. Uh, Robustos just weren't selling mm. back in the 60s. What so, was smaller? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I'm, I don't know if it has anything. I'm totally just guessing here. But, you know, cigarettes were a big thing. In the 60s, everyone was smoking cigarettes. Men, women, kids. Mm-hmm. Everyone was smoking cigarettes. Kids. <laughs> right? I mean, it's it awesome. was everybody. It was everybody. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that had to do with it. People preferred the smaller gauge and length um, cigars. Mm-hmm. But um, then, it, you know, then the 70s hit. And for whatever reason, the Robusto became popular again. So they reintroduced the line. So I had never known. I thought that was a little interesting piece of trivia. I, I didn't know they ever stopped the line at any time. I thought they've always had it. So um, for me, this was a, a box-worthy stick. I would, If I can get my hands on a box of these, I am acquiring a box of these because it, it was that good. I only have a handful. Mm-hmm. Um, you just do a trade like on with your farm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do trades, whatever. The same thing with the Roma Craft. I mean, you can't buy them, you know. Yeah. Some some of these rare-to-find sticks, you get a you get trade, big, find the right people, yep. and, and network. Yep. Networking is huge for acquiring a rare cigars. You're really into that forum thing. We're going to take a couple times. Yeah, we could, we could take a couple minutes on that. Sure. You're really into I, I'm sorry. Are you all done? Oh, I'm done. Okay. Boxworthy. So, Boxworthy. Boxworthy. Partagas Series D, number four. Yep. Uh, two things come to mind. Number one, I would probably never do a story geek show on how to acquire Cubans. Um I would probably do a separate show and have you email me for the information no. and do a private link because uh, we don't need the corporate attorney being more busy than he currently is. That's right, right, one. right. You know. Uh, number two, <laughs> um, which we'll call it, you're into these forums, right? And I, I, I know what they are. I'm, a, I'm, I've gotten requests from li- listeners, forum leaders, whatever they're called, group leaders on Facebook or or, or where they are and whatnot. So I see them in my feed. I have no idea where this is going. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not active in. I'm not active in them. I know a lot of people do other podcasts. Like, hey, I'm going live. Like, you know what I mean? Check sure. me out. Yeah. And you know, it's like, dude. Okay, whatever. Like, you know, it, it's fine, right? Um, what's it like? Because so I've 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 received a, f- a couple of emails, and I drew, I know Drew has too. We could probably do like a prequel to a potential show, but like what, 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 cause you're, cause you're, you're, you're new to Stogie Geeks, right? So I'd like to get your opinion on like for the Stogie Geeks listeners out there who's either active in a forum or, or there or, or is in a forum but really is not active. You, cause I mean, I remember when I spoke to you the other day, you were traveling and met a new friend and, did some stick trades and all, yeah. so you're really yeah. into the farm thing, which is cool. Yeah, I don't really need to know about that for for the purpose of the show. But like, what what's that experience like? Because I I don't share that. I I, I don't spend a super bunch of time on social media, right? I just you know I'll scroll like a couple of things, sure, and do my thing because like we work in computers, yeah. And and I just I don't when I go home, I I'm like I'm I'm computer up to here. I'm done. Yeah, and you know the cool thing about it is it's not um. It's not like really a structured thing. It's very organic. Mm-hmm. Um, and it takes the term brother of the leaf and sister of the leaf to a new level. It's, mm-hmm. it, it, I'm not trying to be cheesy. I mean, it's just true. Like you meet, you know, to your point, he just he was talking about how I just met somebody and I, I went and I did a trade with them and all this. And it was literally someone I had never even met. And we talked maybe for a week on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, we liked similar sticks and uh, this one gentleman, I think that Joe's the situation Joe's talking about is I was buying a couple of humidors off the guy, but he had sticks too, and and we did trade sticks. Um, it, it's a really cool experience because you it's it's like this, but you could get it all the time, so right? Yeah. I mean that's why I love Stogie Geeks. 
it's we're just talking about cigars and that's what these forums like you're just you're talking about it and you know i could put out there hey i'm looking for the roma craft black irish no like good luck <laughs> right no like it might take a day it might take three days it might take a week but somebody eventually will get back to me and say hey i found two mm-hmm. and that's that's another cool thing about it is yep. this you find rare things that you can't find. You get to, plus you try new sticks. Oh, hey, I saw that you like this. That's the other thing. So, again, I'm gonna keep picking on the Black Irish. There's some some people I know from these forums who I've never met. They will hit me up and say, Hey, I saw some guy trying to unload some Black Irish. I remembered that you liked them. Yeah. You know, so you look out for each other, and I do the same thing. You know, we were talking about the monsters. I know a couple of guys that are big. Tatuai high. Sure. They like the skinny monsters, the pudgy monsters. They like all that crap. Uh, and if I come across it, I'll hit them up. Hey, do you want me to get the box? And I will buy the box, and then they'll pay me, and then I'll ship it to them. Yep. Right? And I've had guys do that for me. So it's it's a really cool – it's like a little community. Yeah. You know, it's it's like it's like stogie geeks, but all over the, all over the world. I mean, I have a guy in the United Kingdom um, – hopefully he's watching uh, – who loves Ezra Zion, and mm. they mm. can't get him. In yeah. in the UK, so those are awesome. Oh, sticks. I have an entire drawer in yeah. in my humidor yeah, dedicated yeah. to those, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but I will say I'll get them and I'll 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 send them to him because he can't get them, you know. So it's cool. Um, it's a really cool community. Mm-hmm. And you uh, do you send people on like missions for your stuff, or like not oh, missions, but you know what I mean. Oh, like, yeah, I'll uh, give you a perfect uh, example. Like Saka just came out with the. Um, STFU exclamation point. Yes, right? yes. The, so- the sober Mesa brulee uh, controversy. Yep. Right. Yep. And uh, there was there was pre-orders and they sold out and yep. I was having a hard time finding them. And there's a guy that I had sold some Saka stuff to before, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Hey, I know you like these. My brick and mortar has them. Do you want me to put you on a list?" I'm like, "Yeah." He went to the store, put me on a list, and I acquired it from that store. Nice. You yeah. know? So, yeah, yeah. The, everyone looks out for each other. It's really cool. That's I gotta what I'm saying. You, I got to teach you my way. Just call Steve Saka. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't have to. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll call his cell phone and be like, yo, can you send something on 24 uh, Yeah, away? I wish I had that luxury. <laughs> I'm still trying to get him. I'm trying to. I, so, hey, at Sir Smoking, Instagram, check me out, at Sir Smoking. I keep trying to get Saka to comment on my stuff there. That's one of my goals. That's on my bucket list, just to get him to comment on something on my Instagram, because I love his stuff. I got a Saka Squatch. I love the Saka Squatch. Do you? You got one already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have two in my house right now. One, Could one you? is for a buddy of mine for his birthday. But yeah. So instead of Elf on the shelf, because you have kids, right? I got Saka on the shelf. He's literally on the shelf. Is he like the Elf? Like the kids gotta find like the Saka. <laughs> no. In fact, when I put the Saka up, I, I bet told you the kids, if you did that. If what? you did the sa- soccer squats on watch the shelf? Yeah. for your family, you would get them to reply. Ooh. Instead of Elf on the shelf. True. Yeah. That's on, true. Kid. I love that. And if he doesn't reply to you, I'll call him. Be like, <laughs> Give the kid a double like. Come yeah. on, let's go. Let's move on. No. Um, but yeah, I, these, these, these do forms. Do you tag him in the, in the gigs? All the time. All the time. Oh, yeah. All right. All the time. Because, like, yeah, I'm a huge fan. Sober Mesa, the Sim Compromiso, Todos Las Dias, Mi Carida. I love all this stuff. Yeah, bring back the Umbagog, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have those too. You know what? Those st- Another great stick. I'm not going to review it <laughs> officially, but the Umbagog. Umbagog. Consider the. It's named after the lake you used to go fishing. Yeah, oh, up in New goes Hampshire. Fishing. Yeah. yeah. Um, fellow New England guy, but those sticks, you know, they consider them like kind of like the lower end Dunbarton sticks. And. They're not. They're really good sticks. Yeah, we had a a, a um, uh, interview recently with Steve Saka. Yeah, um, I, I heard it. And like, I was like, people, like, I was like, man, like, the girls, I say the girls, the humano workers were like calling Umbagog's Me Carita seconds, and I'm like, dude, really? Like, I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, 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 nah. He's like, nah. That's just uh, that's just one of those yeah, things. Yeah, I think I think that go. I think that bothers him when he hears that because mm. I've, I've heard him on interviews talk about that. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like you know. But again, that that's it's up it's up for um, the uh, shop owner to um, educate the people, which is 
Yeah. It yeah, was just you. a few episodes ago, wasn't it? Yeah, you? yeah. It was uh, the Steve Saka interview was uh, storygeeks.com forward slash 331. I thought it was recent. Yeah. So, yeah. So, just like, just so you know, I always say this in the beginning, but I didn't today. If you want the show notes, you go to storygeeks.com forward slash, for example, today is 339. It's 339. Storygeeks.com forward slash 339. And, yeah. All right. If you write about any of these, send it to me. So I can put it in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. And I got to get Nelson's brick house thing. He sent it to me, but we've had a busy two weeks, so I'll get that up oh, there. Oh, yeah. Wrote a mighty, mighty brick house review. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good stick, too. That's a big beast. That's a good stick. So I guess we're off to go get some mad mofos. Is that the goal? Twist my arm. You have a conference call? Yeah, I got to jump on a call, but. Yep. I can work remote. Uh, We're out of here. Sounds good. Let all the right. weekend begin. Let the weekend begin. Story Geeks, remember, we keep the conversation going all week long. Visit StoryGeeks.com. Check us out on Facebook.com forward slash StoryGeeks. Email all of your complaints to Drew at StoryGeeks.com. Drew, we miss you. Story Geeks, thank you for watching and listening. We will see you next time. Peace.